before I begin, that's always nice. Um, thank you all for inviting me. I was last in this room about this time 18 months ago, and um, we were having a discussion about whether anyone was going to react to government cuts and fees and so on, and people were arguing they wouldn't, and I said, no, no, I'm, I'm sure I trust that they will. And two days later, Milbank happened. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, two things to learn from that. The first is, if I say something in this room, I'm definitely right. <laughs> um, and, and the second is that Birmingham students are awesome, so uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to, um, I'm going to make a few of my arguments of my own, that is the uh, last speaker for the opposition. I'm just going to deal with a few of the points the proposition have made. Um, the first, I mean, Christopher's case is um, it's quite simple. He's saying that there's a failure to match rhetoric and action. So you have this catastrophic, catastrophic rhetoric, you say the whole world's going to end, and then you say you should change your light bulb. And that turns people off. And he's quite right. There's a very um, lengthy, comprehensive sociological study which shows that if you, have, if you say to people, the whole world's going to end and you need to change your light bulbs, then they don't believe you, because that's obviously not the case. Um, and there's two solutions to that. Either you change the rhetoric or you change the action. And I think the important thing when we're looking at genuine catastrophe is not to say, well, let's dumb down the rhetoric, let's give up, let's fail. It's to say, no, no, what we need to do is be honest and say we need serious action. We can't just change our light bulbs. We need to change the system. And I'm going to come on to that later. Second, um, Polly. So Polly says that she wants a dream. Well, Polly, I have a dream. And my dream is of a world that's democratic, that's genuinely democratic, where no one is oppressed. And that means we've got to start with being honest with each other. We can't say we're the holders of the truth, but we're going to hide that, hide that truth under a bushel if we don't trust you. We need to say no. We trust each other. We're going to be honest. And in this case, what we face is genuine catastrophe. So my case today is the case for telling the truth. And so let's be absolutely clear. This is the truth. Uh, Mark Twain, the great writer who said almost everything that ever needed to be said, said the difference between the right word and the wrong word is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. And for me, when coastal cities, by the end of this century, are going to be underwater, displacing or killing millions of people, that's not change, that's catastrophe. When the Sahara is expanding into West Africa, again, potentially killing millions of people, when billions of people are seeing their water supplies in peril, that's not change, that's catastrophe. When earlier this year we started to see the methane hydrate crystals at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean melt and bubble up, something that's not happened for 251 million years, and when it did happen then, led to the wiping out of 95% of life on Earth. That's not change, that's catastrophe, and so we need to be honest that that's what we face. My, uh, I, I was talking over Christmas to, um, to someone who's quite a senior foreign affairs advisor. He used to advise the UN on terrorism, he used to advise the EU, again, on um, international relations, and I told him I'd like to go for the summer for a trip to the Arctic Rim, to Iceland and Svalbard and so on, and visit those places. He said, oh, what? Because you mean, our, cause that's probably where our children are going to have to live. Uh, and that, that shocked me, because what he was saying is, as a senior advisor to governments on foreign policy, they're having genuine contingency planning, there's a, quite a likelihood that humanity is going to have to cling on in the lives of our children to the Arctic Rim, and that's not change, that's catastrophe. So that's my first case. Um, the second thing I'd say is, yes, there is a problem. We can't pretend that we're dealing with this problem effectively. But I don't think that problem is because of, re because of discourse. And there's a simple way you can tell that, and that is the majority of people on Earth want drastic action on climate change. The latest poll shows about 60% of people globally understand the risk and want serious action on it. Even in America, the majority still believe that climate change is man-made and they want serious action on it. 91% of Chinese people believe climate change is man-made and they want serious action on it. The problem here is not the discourse, the problem is the system, and the problem is the people who control that system. And so let's start being honest with each other about the nature of that problem. Mark Twain, again, famously said, it's difficult to persuade someone of the truth when their income depends on not believing in it. And that is the problem we have. The problem isn't the discourse, the problem isn't the truth. The problem is that those in power are those who depend on the system as it is and will do everything they can to stop us from changing it. And so if the question is, how do we change the system. If the question is how do we take those oppressed people, that 60% globally, who want serious action on climate change, that 91% of people in China who want serious action on climate change, how do we organise them? Then we need to look at the great organisers in history. And for me, I always turn to Paulo Freire, a Brazilian educator who organised throughout the slums of Latin America. And what he tells us is essentially that you can't liberate with lies. He says, one does not liberate people by alienating them. Authentic liberation, the process of humanisation, is not another is not another deposit to be made in men. He says, where am I? 
He says, our role is to liberate and to be liberated with the people, not to win them over. We need to be honest with each other, we need to have discourse, we need to discuss, because that is ultimately how you achieve liberation. That's ultimately how we take power for ourselves and away from those elites who are stopping action on climate change, the desperate action that we need. And we know this to be true because there are examples. Look, for example, to the one country which has taken firm and honest positions in climate change negotiations consistently this decade, and that's Bolivia. Bolivia is the most democratic country on earth. The president of the water board in any town in Bolivia is elected. Decisions are made through elections. The budgets of cities are allocated, of, sorry, the budgets of streets are allocated by committees of everyone who lives in that street over the age of 10 in some towns in Bolivia. And that town, the most demo- and that's it, country, the most democratic country on earth, is the one country where people have, once they've been liberated, once they've been honest with each other and been educated, they're the ones who go to every summit and say, well, all of us have said that we need radical action we need radical action now. So my case is very simple. My case is the case for the truth. The problem is not the discourse. The problem is the system. We can't, it's true that we can't say, on the one hand, there's a huge problem. On the other hand, you need to change your light bulbs. You're to blame. It's just your consumer behavior. But we don't change the discourse by doing that. We change the ask. We say what we need to do is change the system. There's a real problem in the climate movement that we don't believe in people. We tell people that you are the enemy. And the truth is, people aren't the enemy. People are on our side. People agree with us. The problem is the elites and the system that they perpetuate. And until we start to organise ourselves together and be honest with each other in standing up to those elites and claiming power from them, we're never going to solve climate change or any of the other problems in the world. So let's start being honest with each other and please oppose this motion.